From demonic sacrifice and world-ending curses to parental trauma and school bullying, The Owl House is a highly atypical Disney series that got away with a lot. And if you aren't a fan yet, you should be. Luce's arrival on the Boiling Isles is anything but comforting. In the first episode, she crosses paths with the wild witch Eda Clawthorn and her demon puppy, King. Eda recruits Luce to steal a crown from a place only a human can enter. The heist goes well, right up until the warden decapitates Eda with a swipe of his axe. Ow! Oh, I hate it when that happens. It's a hell of a thing to drop on a new audience, and it certainly sets the tone for the series. Turns out Ida can pop her limbs off at will, with no ill effects. It's never made completely clear why she has this ability, though it's proven useful. But it may be the side effect of the owl beast curse which affects Ida. Probably a great icebreaker at boring parties, though. Sure, Ida is quirky, but what else can go wrong with this delightful witch? Well, season one's episode four reveals she's burdened by a monstrous curse. If she doesn't take a special elixir regularly, her body contorts into a huge owl-like beast that can't distinguish friend from foe. The curse, which was inflicted by her own sister Lilith, haunts Ida's nightmares as well. It has its own, almost cute, form that can stretch into a looming nightmare which torments Ida. Not only this, it begins to stalk Lilith's mind too when the sisters eventually come to share their curse. But there's a sweet upside. When Ida makes her peace with the curse, she manages to control her transformation, achieving a harpy form. The season two episode, Keeping Up Appearances, is all about family ties. It takes a look at Ida's childhood, as well as her sister Lilith, and introduces their cheerful, naive mother, Gwendolyn. While most of the episode follows Gwendolyn's well-meant attempt to cure her daughter's owl beast curse, Luce has a lot of opportunities to think about her mother, Camila. She assumes that her mom has, by now, realized that Luce is missing from summer camp. But when we see Camila crying at the end of the episode, it's only over an animal documentary. Then, someone clearly pretending to be Luce offers her a box of tissues. A new life. You! A follow-up episode reveals that this fake Luce is named V, a shape-shifting basilisk with a good heart and a need for safe refuge. But until then, it's a nail-biting horror built from the real possibilities of stolen identities and fearing for the safety of our loved ones. The Boiling Isles is not exactly Tahiti. It's a sprawling magical kingdom made from the decayed corpse of a titan, a giant humanoid of unknown origins. Locations range from a mountain-like knee jutting into the sky, called the knee, as well as Lake Lacuna, found inside the titan's ribcage. The Boiling Isles may be disturbing, but it gets worse in season two. Our heroes learn more about the titans with each episode, that they are hunted for their magical blood, and that King is also one of them. Creator commentary for the episode, O oh Titan, Where Art Thou?, also makes clear what originally was only implied. The Titan corpse is King's long-lost father. Amity Blight doesn't know much about the human world beyond the fantasy book series she and Luce both love, but the 1981 movie Mommy Dearest might hit a little too close to home for her. Amity's mother, Odalia, is a master of psychological destruction and has the whole family under her thumb. What is my business is keeping our family ahead of the rest. You're welcome, everyone. In the episode Escaping Expulsion, Odalia steps onto the stage for the first time. She's so untrusting of her own daughter that she forces a magical pendant onto Amity. Like a phone tracker app on steroids, it also possesses a one-way telepathic radio so Odalia can berate Amity whenever she desires, with her daughter unable to defend herself. Due to the wealth and influence of the Blight family, there are very few people with the nerve to interfere. Fortunately for Amity, Luce's love and fearlessness to a fault antics gradually pry Amity away from Odalia's shadow. But that doesn't make Odalia's blind loyalty to Emperor Belos, the primary antagonist of the Owl House, hurt any less when her treachery is revealed in the final episodes of season two. No, we're not done with Odalia Blight. Like most witch families in the Boiling Isles, both Blight parents are part of a coven. While Odalia is part of the Oracle Coven, telling fortunes and manipulating the minds of others, she is married to Alador, a master in the Abomination Coven who creates and controls golems made of purple ooze. 
Odalia runs the business, while Shai Alador runs the research and development in their abomination labs. Together, they're essentially the Lockheed Martin of the Boiling Isles. The episode Escaping Expulsion shows off what the Blight family abominations can do in a trade show display that wouldn't be out of place in the 2005 film Lord of War. Worse, they're using Luce for their targeting exercise, with Odalia slyly attempting to murder her on stage to earn a few more sales. It's tragic that even magic suffers under the weight of the military-industrial complex. Principal Bump is a jarring figure. In charge of the Hexside School of Magic and Demonics, it's up to him to keep his young students safe. At first, it may be easy to assume Bump is actually a small purple demon that's attached himself onto a human body, but scenes reveal that the demon is actually Bump's palisman, the name for a witch's animal familiar, and he's just a nice old guy that happens to use a squadron of supposedly reanimated corpses to patrol the school. And you won't tell the Emperor's Coven about this, will you? No. Hexide School is safe for you both. I'm the principal, not a stooge. Bump's Hexide guards keep Luce's shenanigans in check, they wear upside-down masks with strange rat-like fangs, and their eyes are stitched closed with thick black thread. They wield shepherd's crooks to yank around unruly students. It may be a coincidence that those crooks resemble the ones pharaohs are buried with, but you know, and we know, they're totally zombies. Turns out the Blight family didn't corner the market on creepy automatons. In the episode Echoes of the Past, King, desperate to learn more about his origins, drags Lilith and Luce along on his search for the island where Ida found him. Lilith doubts King's memory, but King is fairly dead on when they discover that the island does exist. King was left there as an egg by an unseen father figure, who thought far enough ahead to leave guards behind to protect the little guy. The Guardian could be something out of the Dead Space franchise. Terrifying, fleshy, fungal-like tendrils chained together smooth stone, with something particularly unnerving about their head. Curved triangles with unblinking robotic eyes. They can skitter along walls, which is guaranteed to scare nearly anybody, and can adapt their fleshy bits into weapons. Fortunately, they still answer to the pint-sized Titan, and one of the Guardians, named John Luke, comes back with King to the Owl House, where he's currently deactivated. The episode Understanding Willow is chock full of understated nightmare fuel. Willow Park is a sweet kid who used to be friends with Amity Blight, with Amity carrying a lot of shame about why they're not buds anymore. During a photography class, which, in nightmarish hexide fashion, uses snapshots of people's real memories, Willow starts getting really weird about people seeing her photos. Turns out, she hides a lot of resentment about how she is treated at Hexide, with another, much angrier Willow protecting her deepest memories. You said I was hurting Willow? I was just finishing what you started! This comes out as Amity, in one of those what-the-hell moments, tries to burn one of Willow's sensitive memories, causing a chain reaction that rapidly changes the girl they know. To fix what she ruined, Luce drags Amity inside Willow's mind. When they get cornered by this other terrifying version of Willow, the pair has to face exactly why Willow hates Amity so much. The truth is even harsher, of course. Amity's parents forced her to stop hanging with lesser students, and Amity is still angry with herself for letting Willow down. It'd take a whole video to unpack why Bellows is such a horror show, but let's stick with some smaller nightmares. At first, details about the Emperor of the Boiling Isles are doled out slowly over the course of the Owl House, but it eventually becomes clear there's something deeply wrong with him. Like Ida, he's inflicted with some kind of curse, with a massive wound covering nearly half of his face. However, the ugliest aspect of all is what he's doing to maintain his power in the Boiling Isles. There's a running plotline about the way palace men are dwindling from the Isles, with their source of wood becoming rarer with each passing episode. Bellos is accelerating this scarcity by using this wood to create magical golems, and by devouring the living souls of as many palace men as possible, which somehow keeps his unstable spells working. This magical cannibalism not only racks his body in agonized spasms every time he does it, it's also just plain ugly to watch. Wait, there's more. Long before Bellos took power, he was a 17th century guy named Philip Wittabane, a phony from the human world secretly living the life of a witch hunter. Originally just a greedy bigot, a whack in the face from a time-traveling Lilith helped set Bellos on his path to enacting genocide. As Emperor, he would claim that mixing all types of magic was a crime against the Titan, and the new coven system he proposed was the cure. Everyone knew too much and got themselves hurt. 
That's why Bellows took in the survivors and dedicated his life to making the coven system. To consolidate his rise to power, Bellows set off false flag attacks as he toured the Isles, blaming the mayhem on the wild witches that didn't submit to his false prophecies. The fear he stoked helped him take full control. Eventually, after striking a bargain with a strange being known as the Collector, he possessed the raw force needed to maintain the system, at least until Bellos finished preparing his genocide of the Boiling Isles. Emperor Bellos has plenty of loyalists on the Boiling Isles, but chief among them is the Golden Guard. Always masked and fanatically devoted, there's one at his side for most of his reign. The current Golden Guard is a kid named Hunter, who believes he's Bellos's nephew and, like Luce, doesn't have any naturally occurring magic. He clings to Bellos's promise that his servitude matters in the Titan's grand schemes, which puts him at odds with the residents of the Owl House. But he's got enough sense to begin asking himself tough questions after a while. And the answers are awful. Hunter is a construct called a Grimwalker, the latest in a long line of magical clones, all in the likeness of Bellos's deceased brother, Caleb Wittabane. It is implied that the Golden Guards before Hunter were destroyed after they betrayed Bellos, with Hunter finding out his origins in the worst way possible, during an intrusion into the Emperor's mind. Realizing that he's actually disposable nearly breaks Hunter's mind. Fortunately, he has a secret palisman and the Owl House family for support. King's Tide is the final episode of season two, and by this point, there's not much left to lose for our beloved heroes. The finale is a roller coaster of horror, focusing on a new villain taking center stage. The collector is loose, and this malicious child god has no empathy for the beings he considers his toys. Loose, I'm so happy I had you as a big sister. <gasps> By this episode, the Collector has been teased as a behind-the-curtain entity for a while, but when he's finally released, he turns on his former ally Bellos in a terrible way. Warped into his true form, Bellos is just about to make the human realm his, but he had betrayed the Collector in order to do it. Now bound to King, the Collector decides to play a game of tag with Bellos, ending it in one second. Bellos is gone. There's only the Collector and the very last season of The Owl House.